Imagine waking up in the morning, knowing you're going to spend your day solving the problems you care about for the people you most care about helping. That's your opportunity if you start a business based on your own values. This can have the added benefit of enabling the lifestyle that you wish to have. Now's a great time to start a business, whether B2B or B2C. Uncertainty creates problems to be solved. And after the year we've had in 2020, there's no denying we're in a very uncertain environment and will continue to be so for quite some time yet. In a B2B environment, the unprecedented challenges mean many businesses won't have the skills in-house to resolve the problems that they have. They also won't have the budgets or appetite for risk to take on staff permanently. In many ways, they never did have all the skills they need in-house. You only need to glance at the supplier lists of any large company to realise that so much of what is done to enable a company to deliver is done by third-party suppliers. With new ways of working and problems to be solved, this will only increase. In a B2C environment, 2020 has made customers more open to changing their buying habits and look for new solutions for the things that they need or want. In both scenarios, a startup has the competitive advantage of being nimble and able to move quickly. An example shared on episode two of my podcast, the Project Future podcast, show one business owner launching a service the day it was conceived and delivering it within one week. Once you've determined your niche, you can move fast to make your presence known. The opportunity, the opportunity you have is underpinned by technology. If the pandemic had been even five years earlier, the technology wouldn't have been mature enough to enable businesses to manage it in the way that they have. Virtual meetings over things like Zoom and Microsoft Teams were adopted as standard ways of working in a matter of days. Car payments are now standard for even the smallest of businesses. These are all changes that would have come in more slowly over the course of the coming decade. Leveraging this technology now is your opportunity. Be it to interact with your local community and grow awareness of your business, or to harness a global base of customers that want you to provide the solution to their problem. So why project management? I've been a project manager since 2008. The frameworks and structures that I've learned have enabled me to analyze situations and quantify risk, not only as a professional, but in my personal life too. This has enabled me to consider my options and make better proactive decisions. Part of this has been only committing to one major investment per year and prioritizing accordingly. When it came to deciding whether to start my own business as a contractor, things got tricky when we were expecting our first baby. It was clearly a risk to start a business in those circumstances. So it was one we quantified. We looked at my skills and the market. We looked at our financial needs. We looked at whether my wife supported me making that decision. And we looked at the timing. Considering all of those things, we realized it was feasible whilst my wife was working full time, but not after the baby was born. I had to move soon and make the transition a success before the baby arrived, or we might never have been in a position to justify the same risk again. So almost immediately, I resigned and set about succeeding as a contractor, which despite a nervy few weeks, I made happen. I believe mindset is the foundation to success as your own boss. You can have a great idea, but unless you're willing to do something about it, you'll always wonder, what if? 
As Henry Ford so famously said, if you think you can or you can't, you're right. Start with an open and honest self-assessment of where you are. Consider your skills, experience and interests. Consider how open to change you've been in the past and whether you've been proactive in seeking change or whether you've had to react as change has happened to you. Consider your perception and tolerance of risk. Then consider how tenacious you'll be to make it happen. Once your mindset is clear, think about, fact, what, think about what factors you should consider before deciding whether to invest in starting your own business and what type of business you should start. Think beyond the obvious financial aspects and what you'll sell to whom and consider whether you'll personally get satisfaction from it and whether it'll offer you growth opportunities to keep you interested in the longer term. Often overlooked is the impact your decision will have on others, your spouse, your kids, and other important people in your life. What will your working routine be? How will your new business impact them? What startup costs will the business need? What lifestyle changes will they need to accept as a result? Getting their buy-in early will result in a better experience for you and for them. Once you're clear on the factors you should be considering, it'll be time to move on to prepare and make the right decision. This is my signature six-step future method. Step one is to find something you may be interested in doing. Look briefly and explore all ideas, factoring in aspects of your hobbies and interests, as well as your professional skills and experience. Is there a confluence between them that could become something you can sell? Consider the type of business you want. Will it be possible for you to start fast as a contractor or as a freelancer? Once you've developed a number of candidate business proposals, decide which ones you'll take forwards. Then look to understand why it could be right for you. This is step two. Get a deep understanding of your core customer. Understand why you want to serve them and how you can delight them. Look at case studies and understand how you'll compete in the marketplace. Will you focus on price, quality, or convenience? Understand if the proposed business meets the sweet spot of what you're good at, what you enjoy, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. Fundamentally, does your proposed business align with your personal values? And will it enable the lifestyle you desire? Once you're comfortable with the theory, it will be time to bring it into the real world and trial it, which is step three of the future method. The aim of this is to prove or disprove your thinking before you've overcommitted. You can trial your business by creating a pilot, such as minimum viable products. Perhaps do some volunteering in the space you want to enter or create a side hustle alongside your job. Whatever you, should, you choose, it should be low risk, take up a proportionate amount of your time, money and energy. Most importantly, it should give you the clarity and confidence that you're making the right decision. When that's achieved, your, cha your challenge is to make it happen. These are steps four and five which are to undertake and review. Develop a business plan of the early priorities of your business. Be clear on your dates, including when you'll be resigning from your job, if that's the case. Consider when you'll be in a position to start generating revenue, when you'll break even, and when you'll start turning a profit. Be clear on your cash flow and the trading capacity of your business. 
Think about your branding and marketing approach. When will you run campaigns during the year? How will you grow and maintain a network of leads, of customers, of suppliers and supporters? What will your working environment look like? To review alongside Undertake is paramount to your success. Set up checkpoints on a weekly, fortnightly, monthly, and even quarterly or annual cycle. Also think about milestone-based reviews. This will help you not only check you're on the right track to meet your goals and objectives, but to ensure you're still aiming for the right goal. But in your reviews, you can also factor in your own self-care and the impact the business is having on those key people in your life. When you get beyond the early life of your business, you'll move into the making it better phase through step six, which is to expand. Perhaps you'll pivot again. Perhaps you'll start to serve a new market or demographic. Perhaps you'll grow your profile through your own book or podcast. You'll only know what the right option is when you get there. So what next? Go to my website, www.robcur.co.uk, and you can complete my three-minute quiz to receive personalised feedback as to how ready you are to become your own boss and the areas you need a bit of extra focus on. You can also read my book, Project Future, Six Steps to Success as Your Own Boss, which is available now from all good booksellers. Look to set a goal, and most importantly, take action to make it happen. Monday morning is the most exciting time of my week as I get to time to solve the problems I most care about, which is empowering people to succeed as their own boss. I hope you can get clear and get into the same position where you can solve the problems you most care about.